Welcome to the day zero of the LLM mastery course. In this video, we are going to see about the prerequisites which you should know before going into the course in deep. The prerequisites itself are a lot to cover. So I made it as three parts, beginner, intermediate and advanced. In this video, we are going to see about the beginner prerequisites. Let's start with the beginner prerequisites. What is natural language processing? Natural language processing is a subfield to artificial intelligence and computer science, which focuses mainly between the interaction of computers and human who use their natural languages. But what is the goal of NLP? It is to enable machines to understand, interpret and generate meaningful content to the humans. In essence, it is just a subfield, you know, which will be covering computer science, artificial intelligence and human language because it is trying to bridge the gap between human communication and computer understanding, which is by allowing machines to read, hear and make sense of what, you know, like human is speaking by training it on vast amounts of human language data. Now. What are the key components of NLP? First, syntax. As we all speak syntax in programming languages, even natural language has its own syntax. Syntax is often defined or referred to as the rules that governs the structure of the sentence. For example, the verb should come second, noun should come first, something like that. In NLP, syntactical analysis or parsing as they say, it is used to assess whether a sentence conforms to the grammatical rules. There are grammatical rules to be followed when you are making a sentence and syntactical analysis helps you to assess if that is correct or wrong. Semantics, as the name suggests, it involves understanding the meaning of words and sentences. Semantic analysis allows the machine to grasp the content and disambiguate words with multiple meanings. What is meant by that? Let's take an example of bank. So for example, if I'm saying I went to a bank for getting my loan, which is located at the end of a river bank. Here I'm using bank at two places. One is referring to a financial institution and another is sitting uh, like, you know, referring to a uh, end of a river. So here the computer or AI is expected to understand the meaning of the word and sentence by which it will understand the context and say, okay, the first bank, since I'm saying about loan and like, you know, getting something out of it, it is going to refer about a financial institution. And since we are saying it is located at a river bank, it will say like, you know, it is the end of a river or something like that. Okay. So semantics is very important. Third one is morphology. So what is morphology? Morphology is the study of structure of the words, you know, such as root, prefixes and suffixes. For example, advantage would become disadvantage and play will be like playful, something like that, which will be prefix and suffix. And here the root word will be play. Play is becoming playing, playful, playfulness, whatever you want, adjectives or verbs, but the root word is play, right? Morphological analysis breaks down the word to their constituent part to derive meaning. You might say about playfulness or whatever it is, but it will first understand that, okay, it is something related to play. Pragmatics. Pragmatics deals with how language is used in practice and how it influences meaning. It is mostly about machines understanding the indirect language. So for example, we say like, you know, uh, I am on cloud nine that I'm launching this course. So it should understand that, okay, I'm very happy that I'm launching this course, right? So that comes under pragmatics. So mostly pragmatics is about the machine understanding the indirect language, especially with idioms and phrases. Next, phonology and speech. For a spoken language processing, 
because in nlp it is not going to be just about text it is also going to be about audio or sound so the sound of the speech will also relate you know how the language is spoken for example if i'm shouting a lot it means i'm trying to convey a uh, angry emotion out of it right so those are very important when you are processing the audio because there are use cases like audio emotion analysis now that is about the key components of nlp next let's see about the common tasks in nlp so you can say it as tasks or applications of natural language processing and here you can see there are a lot of things smart assistant document analysis predictive text chat bots and so on and so forth language translation automatic summarization but these are you know an end application but at a task level how we define that text classification there is a text data and we will be assigning a predefined category to that text data for example if the use case is spam detection spam or spam if the email is something you know good or if it is like you know spam something like that is spam detection and with sentiment analysis it depends people try to do it either for positive negative or sometimes people also add it as positive negative neutral but the idea is that it is to express the sentiment or identify the sentiment which is expressed in the sentence all right so that is about text classification and here if you see we are having a set of you know uh, categories and we are trying to assign those categories so the perfect definition of text classification would be assigning predefined categories to text data because even if you see the product reviews right i could have even classified it as type of product right so the tv is not working well i would have classified it as electronics if my use case was to classify the category or product category right so we are assigning predefined categories and that would be the explanation about text classification so what is named entity recognition as the name suggests it is to recognize the named entities so what are named entities people organization dates locations usually your nouns will be named entities right so recognizing those will be named entity recognition so if i say i am making a course on generative ai so i will be a named entity because you know it is saying about some person and you might now wonder okay wasn't you said noun no here i'm saying about pronoun also okay let's start with machine translation next a machine translating text from one language to another is machine translation also you can put it as one form to another and why is that i'll explain now popular applications like google translate have multiple uh, language support which is known as multilingual support in their ai systems and you are also able to see like you know google translate is there that is language translation but when we put it as machine translation there is some another thing we need to see if you want to convert a text to code it is also one language to another okay so that is why it is said as one language to another but you should understand that code is also a language so if i'm saying text to code it is about machine translation itself where the machine is expected to translate a text into a code hope you got that now let's move on to part of speech tagging what is part of speech tagging labeling words in sentences as noun verbs pronouns adjectives and so on and so forth so that it will understand the grammatical role of each of those words so if i'm saying i'm recording prerequisites for my course okay it will say i it is noun uh, or pronoun here am is verb recording will be an another verb where am will be an auxiliary verb and recording will be a primary verb prerequisites uh, again it is going to be another noun right so it will understand you know what is the grammatical role of each of these words in a sentence so we usually classify it as text classification but often sentiment analysis by itself is considered as a task because the amount 
at which every trunk companies try to use sentiment analysis is pretty huge so that also is provided as a separate task here where we'll try to identify the sentiment all right and then we have question answering as the name suggests building systems where once i provide a query the machine is expected to provide a correct answer based on a body of knowledge either it knows by itself or you know we provide it or something like that okay so this is the foundation of systems like ibm watson or chatgpt whatever you see it is all about or it is down to question answering speech recognition and generation so it is formally known as or formally known as speech to text and text to speech okay when you convert a speech to text it is going to be your speech recognition and when you can convert a text to speech it is going to be speech generation next we have text summarization one of a very complex use cases which you can do with ai because it is about automatically generating a shorter version of a long context while you retain the essential meaning underline the la this phrase while retaining the essential meaning because when you are going to summarize it is about you understanding the whole context and then rewriting it in your own words so that is why summarization is a pretty complex task in its own way for reference resolution identifying when two or more expressions in a text refer to a same entity so what is this all about so let's take this itself let's consider i am john okay john is recording prerequisites for his course and he is now moving on to the next topic techniques of nlp here he refers to john right so they are referring to the same entity language modeling language modeling is a task even which is used in pre training of llms which we'll see in detail later where the idea is that the machine is expected to predict the next word which is essential for tasks like autocomplete text generation and so on and so forth and when you say about text generation it will cover everything any kind of text which is generated is text generation so in a way in a way or in machine's own way we can say even text summarization is text generation now let's see about some of the techniques in nlp the nlp has evolved significantly or drastically so to say driven by the advancements in machine learning and deep learning and here are some of the most prominent techniques or the models used in nlp nowadays first is rule based methods you might wonder there are llms right now there is a lot of big models even if not for llms who uses rule based methods you see when you use transformers or llms or even neural networks there is a sense of you know unpredictability or uncertainty that your model might go wrong right but with rule based methods since it is handcrafted right please note the word handcrafted you have crafted the rules to process the language by yourself so it can never go wrong yes the issue is that there is limited scalability and adaptability unless and until you you write a rule for every single change in your use case you won't be go able to go for rule based methods but that is something you should always have in your mind that if i can solve it with rule based methods i'll go for rule based methods right so that is why even in text processing will write rules which is most probably reg regex rules to process the data rather than giving it to llm right the reason is not that it is not just computationally intensive it is also on the fact that you can't trust an llm to generate an output and making that as an output to train your own uh, model with that as an input right so that is your rule based methods now the next one is machine learning machine learning is the base for whatever we see nowadays and even that has been used for a lot of use cases for some time before and that is known as modern nlp that is where modern nlp started so for that 
it will use supervised and unsupervised learning techniques and the algorithms like naive bias support vector machines decision trees and so on and so forth has been used for nlp tasks like classification and clustering now if you might wonder what machine learning models for nlp doesn't seem you know uh, impressive so to say i'll show you at the end of this prerequisite section where we'll be training a naive bias model for text classification or sentiment analysis to be precise and we'll see how much accuracy it gets right now coming on to deep learning neural networks especially rnns and lstms which is a variant of rnn along with that there is cnns as well is used widely in nlp to handle tasks that involve sequential data which is like text like i said especially lstm lstm has a capability to capture long range dep dependencies in text and lstm is abbreviated as long short term memory right so we'll be seeing about uh, lstm rnn and all later but you should know that in deep learning there are neural network like rnn lstm and all which is used for use cases with text with rnn and lstm it is not just that you can do with use cases like sentiment analysis anything which will involve sequence can be used with long short term memory networks so even it can be your stock price prediction you know based on the history of data i want to predict the next day data or next day close price that can be done with the help of deep learning coming on to the most revolutionary architecture after cnn in my opinion which is transformers the introduction of transformers basically revolution revolutionized nlp and unlike rnn transformers can process words in parallel and that will help it to capture better context there are models like bird gpt and t5 which are based on this architecture as its core and have achieved state of the art results in many llp tasks then right but why did i stress on the word then it is because of this thing which has come recently which is pre trained language models you see language models are also transformers but the way it has been pre trained the large scale pre training models have basically changed the nlp landscape these model are trained on vast amount of data and then are fine tuned with specific tasks there is bird gpt3 mbot which are all like you know uh, let's say the parent models of all the models we are having right now and these models are the ones which have made nlp more accessible for applications like chatbots translation and even creative writing creative writing is a very complex process and transformers has paved way for that now we are seeing about the introductions to nlp but it is very important that we understand the challenges which are there in nlp and that is what we are going to see now though there are numerous advancements which are there in the field of nlp right now still there are some challenges first is ambiguity language is inherently ambiguous so whenever a language is there it is always going to be ambiguous or you can say we say like you know double meaning or triple meaning words right for example the word i said as bank so to understand that it is very important the model understand the context tone cultural factors and so on and so forth yes nowadays model are better on that but still it is a very big challenge next one would be context understanding while transformers are improved context capture still maintaining long term context in lengthy conversation or documents is still a challenge right now if you see 4096 is something very common as a context length but after that the model can't handle right so that is still a problem okay and then multilinguality developing nlms to or nlp systems basically that works seamlessly across multiple languages is very complex because the grammar is different syntax is different cultural references is different and more importantly the data which is available for some low resource language are very less so that 
you can't ever match you know or uh, we can say it is highly unlikely because we are all data scientists and we can speak only in probabilities never we can say that it is impossible so it is highly unlikely that you can train a model which will work close to same for any languages in the world so universal models are very difficult to create bias present in language models since nlp models are trained on large data sets which are scraped from in the in internet they inherit and learn whatever bias is present in that data as well yes there are efforts ma made to make sure that these models are equitable but still there will be bias right for me the most important challenge and still people are trying to you know solve this at least these four you know uh, we have made a lot of advancements in it previously we had only 500 now we are moving towards 4096 context length at ease ambiguity is something now llms are able to understand multilinguality yes like i said it is highly unlikely that you can create a model which will work for every language as similar as it works for english but still you know uh, it is not like how it was before bias yes people are making a lot of processing steps and trying to avert that issue but the most important problem that is why i have kept it as the fifth issue which is common sense reasoning reasoning is something what differentiates human from any other species and it will also include ai if i consider ai as a species the only thing which humans have over ai is reasoning because ai is more efficient than human but it will always struggle a lot with common sense reasoning and we can update our knowledge and unless and until an ai can update itself it is not going to you know uh, get the real world knowledge at any time it wants that human can do right and also reasoning like i said reasoning is something uh, which is very challenging with nlp field right now so we have seen about a lot of things now let's see about the applications of nlp how it is used in various industries first things would be search engines nlp is the core of search algorithms if you all remember in the techniques of nlp section i have said about rule based methods right search engines previously were rule based right and still it is mostly rule based okay even if you go for google search the search results are mathematical rules right there is an ai assistant which is there that is fine but the search engine results which google provides it is only because of rules okay so nlp is at there at the core of search algorithms helping understand and rank relevant user queries results virtual assistants like amazon alexa google's assistant apple siri all use nlp to understand spoken commands and respond appropriately customer service nowadays chatbots are used in customer service and those virtual assistants use nlp to understand the inquiries and provide solutions automatically if they can provide they'll provide themselves or else connected to a technical person so that they can help solve the problem and there is healthcare where nlp helps in medical data processing summarizing patient rec patient records and so on and so forth in social media there is sentiment analysis trend detection so that you can capture the trend and probably make it big so this can be done with the help of nlp to interpret interpret user interactions and one of the most important applications of nlp domain is legal and finance to process legal documents financial reports or automate contract analysis nlp has been used very widely in legal and finance so as a summary you can say that natural language processing is a dynamic and rapidly evolving field that gives ability for machines to understand interpret and generate human language from rule based systems it has moved to transformers and you no know, we have come a long way right now with llms 
but however still like i said there are challenges and it has been used in various field due to its advancements next we are going to see about the nlp pipeline the nlp pipeline consists of several stages which will convert a raw text into a structured data which is suitable for model input and then we'll train the model and then so on and so forth right so it will start with text input or data collection and then we'll process those data we'll represent those data and what is that it is the stage where you create embeddings and then you'll select some features if you are doing that uh, it is not something which you commonly do right now and then you have your model selection and training where you'll select what model you want like i said there are num numerous techniques in nlp it is upon you like what you choose for your model and then you have model deployment and then we'll evaluate at real time and then improve it so this is how an nlp pipeline works but let's see about each of those component at an overview with answering the questions what when how why in this course i would have emphasized more on what when how why because that gives you crux about any component and it will allow you to apply your knowledge better so let's start with what on data collection what is data collection it is a process of gathering raw text from various data sources so when you will do that at the first part where you will collect the data for training according to your use case obviously and then how will you do that there is web scraping apis there are open source databases or closed source databases and generally we can say it as databases or user generated content or ai generated content nowadays right so these are the ways you can collect data for training your model and why you should do that it is very necessary because that is going to be your model input for its training data processing it will involve techniques like cleaning tokenization vector representation and so on and so forth all will come under data processing so what is data processing data processing is a stage where you prepare the raw text data for analysis and when you will do that it is before you build the model where you have ensured that you know the data is good for the model to be trained on how will you do that it is through the various text preprocessing methods which i will discuss in the next section and then why you need to do that it is to ensure that you have consistency in your text and the data quality is improved because you are collecting it from internet and so on and so forth there will be bias for you to remove there will be a lot of mistakes there will be missing data you need to handle all of those there it will be very unstructured to handle all of those you need to do data processing next we have model building section and what you will do in model building will be creating and training nlp models on the processed data so once you process the data you will create and train your nlp models so this creation of models and training those models is the model building phase all about when you will do that like i said once your data is created the model will also be created along with the training paradigm because the training pipeline to be written is very important because just model is not going to train by itself right you need to create your own training paradigm that is a very important step which will be added in model building by default so why you need to do that obviously you need to develop models which is to which has the capability to understand and generate languages and how will you do that you'll use the techniques of nlp which we discussed before we could it can be rule based it can be machine learning algorithms deep learning architectures pre trained language models or so on and so forth inference or testing so what you will do here you have trained your model now you need to make predictions or generate output whatever it is so that is what is inference all about when you will do that as like in the definition itself once you train the model this model is used to get new results on new data or you can put it as mostly unseen data because we can't like say like 100% sure that this more data was not there in pre training or 
fine tuning. If you are creating a small model by yourself, you can say with some surety, but with LLMs, you are using internet data. We can't say like, you know, this data is not something which has seen. So I've just put it as new data. How will you do that? You'll use like new data will be fed into the model and the trained model will interpret and provide the output accordingly. And why you need to do that? Then only you'll complete your use case. That is like the basic thing. And also while evaluation, basically you will need to infer your model. So that is why and deployment. Deployment is a stage um, which is about making the NLP model available for real world use cases. And it is done after rigorous testing and inferencing on some real world users. Inferencing with some real world users or we say it as beta testing basically, right? After that only we'll be doing deployment and how we'll do that. There is APIs where you can say like, you know, this is my model hosted and there is cloud services, which is almost similar as APIs. And then there is on-premises infrastructure where there are some companies who want to keep their model to themselves. And then like, you know, they'll try to use on-premise infrastructure. Why you need to do that? Basically to integrate the NLP capabilities to your products and services. Now you have an idea about all of these specific um, components at an overview level. We'll go in deep at each of these components at some point of time in the course, right? But it is very important that you address this specific component, which is data processing, because this is not something which we spend a lot of time on, but it is a very most important component. So let's go on with data pre-processing next data pre-processing or text processing basically here the data is text so text processing can be said as data pre-processing so this is a crucial step which is happening after data collection and before model building it is essential for cleaning and preparing raw text data so that the data quality will be improved and will be consistent for model to be trained on so what are the steps usually like, you know, in old times, this is how it will be happening. And why I'm saying whole, at old times with LLMs, uh, everything has eased up a bit because LLMs have tremendous capability to understand even, you know, some amount of unstructured data or unclean data, so to say. But even if you give unclean data or clean data, both, right? Clean data will give the better performance. So it is always good to clean up your data a bit. But the extent at which that happens previously with normal neural networks, that won't be required nowadays. So this is how the text processing pipeline basically goes. You'll remove the text, you'll do stemming or lemmatization, you'll tag some POS and based on that, you will clean your data and then tokenization will happen. This is how the pipeline works basically. We are not going to go like that. Okay. We are going to see how basically in real world text processing happens. Okay. We'll go for the methods and we'll answer the question as usual. What, when, why, how text normalization. So as you can see here, it was, he visited in London. He visited London. He visited London. All where all our caps here, caps and small. This is probably the most worst data, so to speak. And once you normalize your text, it is expected to have this kind of an output. Okay. Converting the text to a standard format is text normalization. Example is lower case. You can have anything. For example, making it as everything as capital could be your standard format. And that is again, text normalization, right? So when you'll do that at the beginning of text processing, then why you will do that? It is to basically reduce the variability in the text. Because see, if you have everything as small letters or everything as capital letter, there is some kind of a consistency, right? Where it is not something which we see here or here or here or anywhere. Like, you know, if I see all of these in my data pipeline, let's say all of these four sentences are in my data set for each, I would require to write different rules, right? So that would not be the case once you normalize your text. So that is why it is done at the beginning of text processing. And how will you do that? Basically, you can use string methods or custom functions. So here you can see this is a sample text. And if I call text.oer, it is going to be, this is a sample text. But if I call text.upper, it is going to be an upper case. Okay. 
So it is upon your choice. If you want to make it uppercase, it is uppercase. If it is want to be a lowercase, you can keep it as lowercase. The usual convention is to keep it as lowercase. That's all. Regex. One of the most underrated aspects which is there in NLP but has a tremendous potential. So this is a regex exp uh, expression or by regex by itself because regex is abbreviated as regular expressions. So here capital A to Z says that it is character from A to Z as caps and A to Z again smalls. So square bucket considering this character range. Okay. Here we are seeing two with the bracket. Right. So it means that exactly two occurrences of any character from the preceding pattern which means there can be two characters okay it can be capital small capital capital small 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 capital but there should be only two characters and then followed by that there should be digits which is from 0 to 9 that is what slash d says and there should be only three occurrences of those so basically these are the format of harvard courses if you have seen it is cs229 cs231 so on and so forth okay so for that you will write a regex like this if you want to process this specific sentence okay so what is that it is a pattern based text cleaning and extraction procedure and when you will do that it is in early stages of text processing pipeline but it is mostly uh, done after or with normalization at some times why you will do that basically to re remove or modify special specific patterns in text if you don't want some specific patterns in text if you want to remove those then you will do that. For example, URLs are special characters or so on and so forth. How will you do that? You will use RE module in Python, which is default, you know, to perform regex. I'll go in detail about regex, but here is a sample. Okay. Right now, my thing is that I don't want the link there. And if I call this, it will just remove that. And how will this happen? We'll see in detail in the regex section. Okay. Next is probably one of the most important aspects in text processing, which is tokenization. Tokenization is a process of breaking a text into smaller units, which is known as token, which can be usually subwords, words, or even characters. When you will do that, once you're very sure that you know the text is good or you know normalized, why you will do that? It is to prepare the text for further analysis or even to provide the data to the model. How you can do that? There are lots of ways. There is NLTK, there is Spacey, custom functions can be written, or even you can use hugging face tokenizers. Okay. So we'll be again seeing about tokenization as a detail section later from the course. But just to say, you can see word token, what it will do is it will tokenize each word separately. So it will be NLP is fascinating. All will be separate. Okay. So you can see NLP is fascinating has come as separate. Now here you have stop words removal. This is not something which is done nowadays. All right. Because when you remove stop words, um, it is basically collapsing the structure though it doesn't carry a significant meaning, but it was done before. Okay. The process is like I said, eliminating common words, which doesn't carry any meaning. So usually after tokenization, if there is a word which doesn't have any meaning, those will be removed. Basically your stop words, okay, or your auxiliary verbs, so to speak, and like in your, your adjectives can be used, but this, uh, and the, these kind of words won't be used. Okay. This is to reduce the text and for uh, noise in the text and focus more on the meaningful words and how it is done what we'll do is we'll have a set of stop words by ourselves and then we'll make sure that these words are not there okay here are some of the common stop words uh i the in f of for at to on with from these all like you know uh carry very less meaning at least from and to have some meaning but you know not everything has some meaning to it so basically these are stop words so in NLTK itself, there is stop words. And if I do, this is a sentence, sample sentence with stop words. And when I tokenize it, it will be, this is a sample sentence. Everything will be words. And here we are seeing if those are not in stop words. So this is a, with all of these are in stop words. So those are eliminated and others are printed here. 
So next we have stimming and lemmatization. So stimming and lemmatization both are about you know reducing the words to an another form where stimming focuses on root form but lemmatization focuses on lemma which is the dictionary form. When this will happen after stop words removal. Why? Again to reduce uh, vocabulary size and simplify the text. So because each token or each word will, uh, will be a separate entity in your vocabulary and with increase in vocabulary uh, the model to normalize itself across the vocabulary it will have a lot of requirement for training and also for while inference the time will also take a lot okay how will you do that you can use rule based algorithms like quota stimmer in stimming and for lemmatization you can use part of speech information and all which is usually uh, done with the help of wordnet lemmatizer okay so first i'll show you here it is run run ran okay and here it is good uh, run and eat or better running and eat okay so it will not change a lot of things okay it will capture those information whenever it is required but if i did like for example betterness right it will still give betterness okay so that is why people usually don't prefer lemmatization because betterness is something would have been there in dictionary okay if there is a word in dictionary it won't do that okay that is about lemmatization so if you want to do it in your root word uh, it is better to go with stimming but if you want to make sure that the word captures some meaning because that is not something which is usually the case with stimming you can go for lemmatization now like i said we are going to see about regex text processing in detail because that is something which is very important and it plays a crucial role in text processing to standardize and clean the text so what is regex so it is a sequence of characters which is used to define a search pattern and it is used to do pattern matching and text manipulation manipulation basically when you will do that it will be done during the initial text cleaning phases often right after uh, or combined with normalization throughout the text processing pipeline uh, for specific cleaning task you can use um, regex because even in post processing you might require okay why you will do that it is to again efficiently remove or modify specific patterns in the text it will standardize more you can extract information and so on and so forth how will you do that using the re module but we are going to see in detail those right now okay common methods are re.sub which will substitute the pattern with a replacement text find all which will find the occurrences all the occurrences based on the pattern we gave and re.search what it will do is it will find the first occurrence okay so here are some of the common regex operations first is removing special characters so if I say hello, exclamatory mark, how are you, question mark, I, quotes, I'm doing great, hashtag happy. So it will remove all of those special characters. And why is that? Here we are making sub, okay, r.sub, which is substitute. And here the bracket is open, right? So here, a to z, a to z, clashes, okay? So basically, if it is not a character, I'll remove those. That is what this thing is saying about like you know anything which is not a ca character that will match this pattern and i'm gonna replace those with empty string okay so that is why uh, hello how are you doing i'm uh good doing great happy is coming like this removing extra white space again slash is is space okay anything which is not a character or a space will be replaced by text now you might wonder um uh, Will that happen for numbers also? Yes, it will happen. If I had a number in here, it will be removed as well. So that will be the case for removing extra white spaces as well. If I have, you know, numerous white spaces, I'll replace it with one space. Okay, here you can see there is three to four space between each, and those are provided as this has extra spaces. This is how you'll re remove trailing white spaces, so to say as a technical name if you want to extract the email right so email passing is something which is done a lot of times and this is how you can do that okay 
re.findall, find all occurrences of email where the structure will be a to z, a to z numbers or it can also include underscore and so on and so forth okay and here are some patterns as well um, like you know it is a detailed pattern we can go in detail at some point of time but this is how you will extract the emails so how will you remove html tags we have we all know that there is a characteristic for html tag there will be an um, open uh, bracket there will be a close bracket and then there will be some values inside that okay so we are saying anything which matches this pattern will be replaced by empty text so that is why it has become this is bold text standardizing phone numbers so here if it is this digits or this kind of digits what we'll do is we'll make make sure like you know everything is just empty string anything other than digits will be empty string okay but like i said regex can be used anywhere you can use it while tokenization you can clean it and then use for stop words removal okay everywhere regex can be used and that is why regex is a very important component in text processing next we'll see about an another section which is vector representation text representation or commonly known as embedding we all know that computers knows only numbers but text is not number right you all know that it is zeros and ones but even converting number to zero and one are easier right so embeddings are what is the in between phase between text and those zeros and ones okay embeddings are formally defined as tense vector representations of words or phrases that capture semantic meaning okay and significance of embeddings is that uh, it will capture semantic relationship between words it will reduce the dimensionality of the text data it will improve the performance of many nlp tasks okay so that is about embeddings so to say it is just a way that you will represent your data which is text which can be words or phrases and this embeddings will capture the semantic relationship between those words basically those will improve your performance now let's see in detail about the embedding methods first let's see about bag of words what is bag of words it is a process of representing a text as a vector based on word counts when it will be used it will be used only with simple tasks like text classification why it will be used it will be used to because it will be very easy to implement and understand how it can be done basically it can be done by creating a vocabulary and counting the word occurrences in each document here let's take this example this the child makes the dog happy the has appeared twice dog has appeared one times makes has appeared one times child has appeared one time happy has acquired occurred one time back in the reverse here also the will have two okay so if you make numbers of those and then you make an uh, like you know number out of this that will be a bag of word representation okay here you can see this is probably the worst method right it doesn't capture any meaning see if i say like one 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 two what you'll be even able to understand out of that there is no difference right so that is why you know bag of words is not something which is used commonly and then there was an improvement and came tfidf term frequency inverse document frequency here also it occurs based on words okay but it it is all about representing the importance of words in a document relative to a collection so what is this all about if we see about how you will understand what we'll calculate a term frequency where what it means that is frequency of a word in a document and inverse document frequency is about the number of documents which contain those words and we'll make a logarithm out of it and that will be your inverse document frequency because the idea is that if a term is required is repeated a lot it means you know uh, that term is very important but if you see those filler words auxiliary verbs or stop words so to say will have the most number of occurrences right so to filter those out only we'll have the inverse logarithm uh, document frequency component okay so once you do that you will have a vector transformation and here you can see there will be some meaning 
okay here you can see this is having something but the is not having anything okay so yeah so tfidf is something which can be used for use cases like text classification and all and it is a pretty good uh, method for starting okay again here also it is rule based and it is not always you can do anything with rules and then came an approach which is word to wake okay so what is this approach all about you will create dense vector representation of words with the help of neural networks why you need to do that you need to provide embeddings that capture context and semantic meaning when you will do that when you require you know like to capture semantic relationships between words for simple use cases don't those won't be required but for complex use cases yes you need to capture the semantic relationship between the words how will you do that you will train a shallow network um on a large text corpora based on the words um, by using methods like cbao okay so for example king and queen will be related and king will be in a same zone of man and queen will be the same zone of woman so to capture this you need to you know make an embedding model okay so if i do this one here you can see what to make uh, uh, the sentences are cat say meow dog say woof and here i'm calling a word to wake on these specific sentences okay so it will create a vector for all of those instead of cat if i say meow still it will create okay so here you can note the number minus 8 e power minus 3 will keep that and if i keep cat it is minus 0.007 okay but if i say dog you can see this e minus 5 okay the relationship between the words cat say meow dog say woof so here you can see those are tokens this inherently shows that once you make your tokens to represent the relationship between those words or tokens you will use word to wake it is not always that you will have a word to wake model like right now the performance even i didn't like that so what you will do then you will create your own custom embedding with the help of neural networks like ann okay when you'll use that when the pretrained embeddings doesn't capture the specific nuances of your domain it is not always that you know uh, even like for example financial domain it won't capture the nuances so you will create your own embeddings why you need to do that you need to create your embedding for your specific task because that is when it is tailor made which means it will improve your performance and how you will do that basically you will train a neural network with an embedding layer on your specific dataset and this is how it will happen so here i am having a vocab size and embedding dimension vocab size is basically a vocabulary size the number of tokens which it knows that it is there an embedding dimension which is you know um the vector representation dimension so for a word i am representing it with 512 numbers 1024 numbers so that is about your custom embedding uh, dimension okay basically this an nnt embedding is a dictionary but it is a learnable dictionary that's all okay so if i do this right it will create a custom embedding and then uh, what it will do is it will give for five tokens it will give 50 tensor of each okay each tensor will have or like each number will have a 50 number representation for it okay so it will be 5 cross 50 i haven't trained this but we can also train that uh, that is also possible okay and that will that is how you will create the embeddings okay now you know how to process your text you know like data collection is very simple right you'll go for internet sources on so on and so forth you'll collect those you'll process those you'll represent those with embeddings right so now let's go on to the nlp pipeline which we saw before we have seen about the data collection small right i have said like you know you can collect from somewhere like those and all text pre processing is done text representation is done feature selection we we won't do that in nlp basically a lot now it is about model selection and training so in methods already we said say saw about rule based methods with regex so we'll be starting with nlp with machine learning that is all about our next section now let's see about how you can use machine learning for nlp so this section is all about integrating nlp techniques with machine learning models so 
for all those who don't know about machine learning machine learning is just a subset of ai which is focused on creating systems that can learn from experience or uh, and make decision based on those data okay and why is that required previously it was rule based the hierarchy of tech, uh, rule, uh, techniques if you remember it is rule based methods then it was machine learning okay those rule based methods can't adapt themselves and improve themselves but these model can automatically improve based on their performance through experience okay so these have their own set of rules but still it can improve upon their experience so types of ml models uh, there is supervised learning models which will learn based on label data to predict new outcomes so it will in include use cases like classification and regression which is spam detection price prediction and so on and so forth unsupervised learning is a specific type of model where you will try to find the patterns with no labels so it will be customer segmentation dimensionality reduction you know customer segmentation is about clustering clustering uh, things together which has some similar characteristic semi supervised learning is as the name suggests a combination of supervised and unsupervised where you will do that when you have small amount of label data and large amount of unlabeled data okay and reinforcement learning is something when you'll do when you have an environment where you can say like you know if you do this you you have you know a maximized reward reinforcement learning is a kind of semi supervised learning by itself where first you will train with labels okay and then what will happen is the model will reward itself so those reward are considered to be labels indirectly okay so here are the types you can see like i said reinforcement learning is a type of semi supervised learning by itself okay but we are not going to go in detail with all of these types or models we are going to focus on neighbors okay why neighbors okay i think that is very important see neighbors is something which is very efficient okay because it is very fast and requires very less training data it can handle high dimensions and you know like though it is said as naive it is very good for text classification actually okay so that is important reason why we use neighbors for text classification so how will you prepare the data so let's consider the sentiment analysis so this is just demo but we'll see a training separately so let's say we have four reviews here great product bad quality excellent service terrible experience positive negative first negative okay this is our data set vocabulary building so it is about splitting those words and that will be a vocabulary great product bad quality excellent service terrible experience okay that will be a vocabulary building this is how basically neighbors training happens okay so what it will do is it will calculate the prior probabilities okay the probability of being positive out of these four it is like equal okay positive is also 0.5 negative is also 0.5 that is prior probabilities but what is the likelihood probability like let's say this word is there what is the likelihood of that word being showing that you know like that is positive that is about the likelihood probabilities okay this works based on bayes theorem which is about conditional probabilities okay the probability of a given b is equal to probability of b given a star probability of a by probability of b okay so given a given b is about occurrence of a and occurrence of b so this is all about saying like for example probability of great being good is equal to the probability of good like you know uh, the sentence being stated as good given great by the probability into the probability of great occurring by the probability of good okay that is how the formula is with bayes theorem when you apply those these are the values you get for the positive classes and these are the values you get for negative classes right and when you do for text classification let's say you do it for good product and bad product okay good product for positive and good product for negative itself okay we'll see about good occurring in positive and product occurring in positive and good occurring negative and product occurring in negative the probabilities of those okay and if you do the probabilities will be 0.00693 for positive 
and 0 0.0034 for negative so it is set as positive this is how basically it works but should we do this all by ourselves in mathematical no it is not required why there is a library known as sklearn which does all of this and we are gonna use that so before going into training uh, we are going to see about the limitations where the main limitation is that it is under an assumption that there is a feature independence which is there because this shows that you no know, like this feature is dependent but those good is a feature which is independent okay but usually that is not the case with text data and that is why you know uh, there is a limitation with neighbors but still it works very well in real world okay so that is about the introduction for the neighbors for text classification where we are seeing about NLP with machine learning now. Now let's move on with training a neighbors classifier with the help of sklearn. Here is a code for training a sentiment analysis model with the help of neighbors. Okay. This is how usually it works in real world. Okay. You need to use class because it is very uh formatted and it will be very easy to manage okay and you can add your doc strings for explanation so please try to follow this kind of a procedure this format is known as web08 okay so here we have the imports numpy and then tfds which is tensorflow da data sets from where we'll basically load the data set for our training and then train test split to split the data set for training and testing and then we have vectorization uh, which is tfid vectorization okay like i said for simple text classification to create those vectors which is your embeddings tfidf is more than enough okay and then for model we are going to use multinomial name bias uh, and then we'll use pipeline to combine those vectorization and model all as a single pipeline and then job loop to save and load models or even data sets stop words to remove those and then word tokenize to tokenize the sentences and then we have regex to you know, clean uh, basically whatever is required this is just a demo so we are not expecting a very good performance and all here um here we are creating a sentiment analyzer class and in initialization we have max features which is 5000 and test size is 0 0.2 random state is 42 all are provided in initialization the pipeline is set to none by default and the stop words is the set of stop words uh, which are English you know which we got from NLTK corpus okay to understand this what we are going to do is we are going to go through the main function okay so first you are creating an analyzer which will call the init function and we have seen what happens in the init function so first what we'll do is we'll load the data so here we have the load data function which will load the IMDB data set so what happens here First, we are calling the tfds.load function. Basically, it will load the TensorFlow dataset about IMDB reviews. Okay. We are setting the width info as true so that it will provide the metadata information and all and as supervised as true so that you will get the labels as well. Okay. And dataset of train and dataset of test is obtained from there, which is train dataset and test dataset. So what we'll do is we'll come concatenate these two data sets and then we'll create numpy array of those. Okay. That will become your X and Y. X is your independent feature and Y is your dependent feature. Y is basically a label which depends on your X. Okay. And that is how the data is data set is loaded. Okay. Now you have the prepare data section. Okay. What it will do? It will basically split the data set. Okay. So it will pre-process the text and then it will split it as X and Y as X train, X test, Y train, Y test. So that while testing, we'll make sure that, you know, uh, those data is not leaked. And this data is basically not test data. It is validation data. Okay. You'll validate the model, validate the performance that how it has tra trained itself. Okay. Now you'll call the train model function where what it will do is it will create the pipeline first. So how the pipeline is created? The pipeline is created by calling the TFID vectorization. Okay. And the max feature, if you see, it is going to constitute about the number of embeddings. Okay. So I'm going to represent it with 5,000 features. That is what is max features all about. And once I represent those, I'll classify 
with the help of multinomial naive bias classifier okay once you create that pipeline you'll call the fit which is basically the train function for ml models in scikit-learn where how you'll do that you'll do with x train and y train okay so given an x like this you'll get a y label like this that is what is uh, pipeline all about okay now your pipeline is trained okay what you'll do you will evaluate those okay so how is that so once your pipeline is trained you will call the predict function on your test data set and those will be your predictions data uh, predictions and we'll call the classification report which will have the precision recall and so on and so forth everything will be there in the classification report and will also print the accuracy so once that is done we'll save the model and when required we can load the model and do inferences later and how you'll do that once you get the text you will process the text and then the pipeline will predict the output okay so this is how the pipeline is also here now let's see how this works python p underscore sorry, one underscore beginner naive sentiment naive by sentiment dot p1 and now uh, it is trying to load the imdb data set so it is already there in my system so it is not downloading it for your case it will download it okay it's pre-processing the data and as you can see here the data set is already loaded with 50,000 samples in it to process those 50,000 usually it will take some time and it is done now it has split the data into training and testing the training model procedure is happening now and the model is trained you know like in minutes and here you can see the accuracy is around 86 percent that is pretty good right we didn't do a lot uh, like for example this to code this right i took only around 10 minutes actually because it wasn't very problematic and to get 86 percent accuracy it is pretty good if i work some things like you know like text pre-processing and all i can push it to 90 92 easily right and here you can see the inference is is at real time right why go for advanced model for these kind of use cases that is why i showed this in our prerequisite section okay here you can see the accuracy is 8536 the model has been saved and loaded again and when i gave in testing okay this movie was excellent the acting was superb it said positive i didn't enjoy this film at all the uh, the plot was confusing and the characters were poorly developed it identified that it was negative an average movie it has moments but it, it overall it, it is just okay if i had trained it for neutral it would have said neutral but it gives a negative feeling right so it has said negative right and that is how you'll train your own naive bias classifier for sentiment analysis in the next section we'll be moving on with the intermediate prerequisites where i'll be covering about rna networks for your advanced use cases than just text classification all right so here you can see there are some main networks you need to see and we'll also make a story creator with the help of rnn that we also do okay and that will be done in the next section i hope you all like this video guys if you all like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon this is a free course and here you can see for prerequisites itself i'm not even able to make you know a single video after i've made it as beginner intermediate advanced because that requires that much time you know for example this beginner video itself took around one hour and here after it is gonna take even more time because i need to explain the networks at least to some extent so that you'll be able to understand why the llm networks are preferred and how it came right so these are all for free all i'm expecting is just some likes and comments of yours so please hit that. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, happy learning.